All right, this is a 13 speed Eaton transmission. This is the auxiliary case. There was an issue with the uh, synchronizer in it, which is right here. And also with the shift fork. This is the splitter shift fork, and this is the high low shift fork. And the driver's issue was is he'd go into high range and he couldn't come back down into low range. Um, it was sheared right here. The shift fork wasn't laying in the bottom and it was not interfering in any way with high low, high low operation. Um, that tells us the synchro was screwed up. So, uh, how this transmission works, how the auxiliary case works, is uh, you have your counter shafts here and here, and you have your main output shaft. This is the splitter gear, and this bigger gear inside here is the uh, reduction gear. So this gives you your low range, and then uh, your high range is this, this clutch will slide out, and it will uh, engage this gear, and then your splitter moves in and out here, and uh, engages the top five gears. So again, this is this the reduction gear in here is for gears one through four. These gears here are for five through eight. And these gears here are for uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, five through eight high which is your last five, your top five gears. When you spin it around to the back side, you have counter shaft, counter shaft, yoke, speed sensors obviously, speed sensor housing, rail curing housing, and you have your high-low housing and uh, valve. This is your uh, air regulator, <clears throat> and this is your splitter valve and housing. So a lot of people don't realize that there's actually two transmissions into one and uh, in days past you would have what's called a twin stick transmission and your auxiliary case was that second stick. Well now with pneumatics everything's air operated. So this one is uh, all back together. One important note, these the counter shafts have to be timed to the main shaft and if you don't do that properly you will not, um, you, it'll just chew itself up in no time flat. You won't, may or may not have high and low range, uh, and you probably won't have your split uh, either. So, it's something to note when you, uh, when you pull these apart. It's, uh, you go on Eaton Road Ranger or roadranger.com, and you can get all the literature from Eaton for free. Uh, that's the beauty about Eaton products, is they stand behind their product 100% and they will give you every piece of information that they have ever published for free. Not a lot of companies do that. So uh, there it is. Pulling it down, it's pretty self, it's, it's pretty uh, pretty easy. The biggest thing is, is you have dowel pins that go here and down the bottom corner right here. And those get, before you take any of the mounting bolts out, you have to drive these pins forward and they will come out of it, the, and they'll they're a press fit into the main case and a slip fit on the auxiliary case. And after you knock them all the way forward, then it'll come right out. You clean the dowel, dowel pins up, you clean up the bores, you press them back into the uh, the main case, lube them up with oil. Just a slight film is all you need. And when you're putting the main the auxiliary box back on, once you're on the dowel pins, you literally can do this, and it will close the two back together. If you have to draw it in with bolts, there is something something wrong, out of time, or uh, uh, or the splitter, or the high-low range is not in the low position. It's not rearward. This is in the low position right now. You put it in the high position, like this. That's high, and that's low. Low. So that's uh, again that's out of a Peterbilt if I didn't already say, and uh, she's going back together. She'll be driving by this afternoon. See you later.